The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 135 Philly Fracas Huh? Maple followed Starlight's gaze down, under the table, to where Redshift was shivering in the heat, back to the table's central leg and taking in her surroundings with a fragile, newly restored composure. You're awake down there? Mm. You're awake down there? She asked, poking her face down under. Redshift glanced frantically her way and just barely managed to keep her mask of defiance from shattering. W where did you take me? She hissed, trying to sound menacing. Maple raised a hoof above the table, hoping Valet would take the hint and not interfere. In a bar on the third level, you're not in danger. For a long moment, the filly glared back at her. Maple kept eye contact, but remembered to blink, hoping it would make her less threatening. Finally, Redshift managed, And where are you taking me? To wherever we were when you woke up, Maple answered. Redshift stared at her for clarification. You, um, Maple bit her lip, passed out down below, and we didn't want to leave you there like that, so we carried you with us. We just wanted to make sure you were all right. Now that you're up, you can go wherever you normally would. Really? I don't believe you, Redshift eventually stated. I set a trap for your friend. You made my friends look like fools because our trap wasn't good enough. We got what we deserved for not being better, but we're your enemies. Why would you want to help me? Because you're a pony? Maple shrugged. Because it was our fault that you were unconscious? Because it's a decent thing to do? Redshift sat and snorted. Fine then, you're a fool too. Decency doesn't get you anything in Iron Ridge, and if you believe that, you must not be from around here. Even the pampered stone district isn't that naive. If you want something, whether you deserve it or not, you take it by force. That's how it works. But you don't seem to be leaving, Maple countered with the premonition of a smile. Something tells me you want it to work this way, even if you don't believe it can. Don't give me that, Redshift pouted coldly. You're keeping me captive. That evil bat is on top of this table, and the moment I come out, she'll jump on me and use her dark mind magic again. Starlight loudly cleared her throat, having jumped down to the floor herself. If you can get what you want with force, why don't you go make this city a better place? Suddenly ignoring Maple, Redshift matched Starlight's stare. You're the filly with the crystals. Starlight tapped her horn with a hoof, and it let off a faint shower of teal sparks. Not right now, I'm not. Answer the question. Hmm. <sighs> Redshift snorted and turned away. You've seen the state Blue Leaf is in, unless you're blind as well as dumb. One pony can't do anything, not even my dad. You're not just one pony, Starlight countered, growling. You have a whole pack of friends who are willing to fight a mare who could have killed you all in her sleep for you. When you can't do anything by yourself, try fighting with your friends. We have, Redshift snarled back, face inches from Starlight's own. Didn't you hear me down there? Me and my friends spend every day going down and patrolling the dark when the power is on and when it's off, looking for stragglers and trying to convince them to move. We've stolen and made and sold things to get money to buy lights for ponies who are too stubborn to leave, and we've carried up on our backs ponies who wanted to and couldn't. A stallion who fell and broke his leg in the dark and couldn't even get up to get food. A mare who was having a foal in an old bedroom that we only found because of her cries. And we found bodies, too. Three of them that I touched to close their eyes because they spent their last moment trying to see something before they died. So don't you dare tell me I'm not trying! Starlight took a step back, expression faltering, and Maple pressed back and urged a hug the red filly. Well, Starlight recovered shakily. You haven't fixed your generator, have you? Redshift took another step, giving Starlight no quarter. If we could, we would have. It's blocked by a door only Sky District technicians can open, and even then we have no idea how to fix what went wrong. She hesitated slightly. And we were trying to. After we got our revenge on that bat, we were going to see if she had a card key we can use to open the door. Then we could at least see what was wrong and maybe find some pony here who could fix it. If we could fix this emergency, we could get back to doing what mattered and try to help Blue Leaf with other things. Immediately, Starlight pressed back. She's right here. You can ask her. Redshift snorted. No, I told you, Blue Leaf doesn't work that way. But it's what you want, isn't it? Starlight drew herself up to match Redshift's height. They were perfect equals. A world that's fair, where ponies help each other just because they can. 
She said earlier she wanted to see your generator. Go show her. Or do you not have enough faith that good things can happen that you won't even accept one when it shows up in your face with your name on it? If I could trust ponies like her and not expect anything bad to happen, Blue Leaf wouldn't need fixing, Redshift sneered, not backing down. If I trust you free now, that's just a recipe for losing. Is it? Starlight was shouting. You are a zombie. If we were evil, we could have thrown you off a cliff or tied you up in an abandoned building or any number of bad things, but we didn't. Instead, we helped you, so are you going to get it together and get a chance to help your ponies, or are you going to be a coward who wouldn't solve a problem because you were afraid of working with ponies she didn't like? Huh? Starlight, Maple hissed, breaking back into the conversation. Remember, we were only keeping her safe while she woke up. Now that she can take care of herself, we don't need... Twack! Ow! Oh! Starlight fell back, both four hooves to her cheek where Redshift had punched it. Her eyes burned and her horn sparked, struggling to life when, All right, playtime's over! Valet erupted from the floor between them like a barricade, forcing both fillies back. Her wings lashed out, grabbing Redshift by the barrel and dragged her half into the shadows, impervious to the thrashing of tiny hooves. Listen, you little punk, she growled in Redshift's face. You've seen bad stuff, I've seen bad stuff, we've all seen bad stuff, I get it. Being a little mistrustful of everything, I get too. Especially me. Never trust a bat. But the moment you pick a fight with my friends while I'm around, you go from being a rude dude to a screw dude. She leaned in closer to the Philly's terrified face, frowning. Now, there's two things I'll accept out of you for that. One involves a lot of groveling and a hoof kissing, and the other begins with on guard. Make your choice. Maple's eyes widened, and not only because of Redshift's impending fate. That was the first time she could remember Valet calling them her friends. Her musing was instantly cut short by Starlight appearing at her side, stiff and tense and nursing a swelling cheek. She stepped forward, determined. Valet, Maple demanded. Let her go. Bah? Valet's eyes crossed. She just walloped your kid. What do you mean, let her go? I meant what I said, Maple insisted. It's not worth it. We don't gain anything from hurting her. Let her go. Please. She hesitated, meeting Redshift's quaking eyes, and a filly seemed to be pleading with her, silently begging that she do anything possible to call the bat pony off. Maple returned as reassuring of a gaze as she could, then looked back to Valet. Now! For a moment, Valet was still, four legs like tombstones around Redshift's tiny body. Then she relaxed ever so slightly, and the filly seized her opening, slivering out like a greased eel and darting off beneath another table, losing herself in the forest of legs. Another second passed, and Valet laughed. Wow, Iron Flanks, she chuckled, wiping her eye in a gross exaggeration as she got back up on her stool above the table. What a goody foreshoes! That wasn't even your revenge to call off, it was a kid's! She flung a hoof at Starlight, who was also scaling her stool. There's being merciful, there's being pointlessly merciful, and then there's sparing a kill that isn't even yours, which is also the kind of thing I do. Seriously, she exhaled loudly. You're right, kiddo. You didn't want to beat that brat up yourself or anything. Starlight tensed and shook her head. No, she sighed. Like Maple said, there's no point. She's had a hard life. It wouldn't be fair to make it any harder. The atmosphere calmed enough for Maple to remember the bar's regular shouting in the background, and she decided it wasn't a pleasant change. The thought briefly crossed her mind at how strange it must have looked, her on her stool with her head under the table and three other ponies also down there, none using the table for its intended purpose, until she also remembered that being a bar, strange happenings far odder than that were likely the norm. Eventually, Valet spoke again. So, she fiddled with Randall's discarded mug, which she had picked up off the floor. What was so important about making friends with her anyway? All I wanted for her was not to get ran over or full napped or something terrible. Why try to convince her to like us, too? Maple hesitated. Because she looked sad. Valet sighed heavily, blowing on her loose bang. You're crazy, Iron Flanks. You know that? I hope you do. Anyway, this place is a dump. We should have gotten out of here long ago. She stretched, standing up, and glanced at Starlight. Kiddo, need another ride? I have to admit, the whole fuzzy cuddle aspect is something I can't say no to. 
I think I'm fine, Starlight answered, looking at the floor. So, where are we going next? To uh, find that generator, I imagine. Maple gingerly got to her hooves. Assuming we still want to do something about it? I know I do. That filly may have been angry, but she was as honest as I've ever seen. I don't know that I'd ever be able to forget it if I left without at least trying to do something. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Filet stretched, spreading her wings. Mostly for the spirit, though. Right, Maple nodded. Because if the town is miserable and blames it on the Sky District, they might like the spirit more. Well, let's get going, then. Starlight? With a dramatic flicker, the lights in the bar shut off, bathing the entire room in inky gray. Silence fell just as quickly, and for a second, all was still. Then one panicked Rose voice, and then another, before a white spotlight switched on, aimed squarely at the stage, which was now clear of musicians. Ah, hmm, a too suave, magically amplified stallion's voice boomed. Ladies and gentle colds. End of chapter 135.